fueled by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, viewers like you, the National Endowment for Children's Educational Television, and Delta Airlines. Because learning about geography is a great way for kids to learn about our world, one piece at a time. Delta Airlines, you'll love the way we fly. Exactly. Time pilots seem to catch up with me wherever I go. Maybe I need a new way to get around. Hmm. I have just the thing. It's strong, it's fast, and it'll soon be mine. Dr. Beljar, report at once. Time to wreak havoc with history again, Kikakaman? Yes. I'm sending you through the time port to the United States in the year 1831. There's something very special I want you to steal. Perfect! Science is about to strike again! <laughs> this info beam will give you all the details. Now, get going! Time pilot, Dr. Beljar just stole something from the past. You've got 28 minutes to get it back, or history will change forever. Initiate chrono skimmer launch sequence. Boot up the chrono computer. Power up the engines. Extend the temporal sequencer. Now, get going. We're on the case, and we're chasing her through history. Chrono skimmer, engines hot, vile villains. A race squadron leader will help us get meter and bring back the loot to its rightful place in time. Tell me where in time is Carmen San Diego. Stop her crime and solve this mystery. Tell me where in time is Carmen San Diego. We're on the case and we're chasing her through history. And here's the time pilot squadron leader, Kevin Shinnick. Welcome aboard, everybody. I want you to hang on tight because we have a very big mission, but very little time. So let's meet today's time pilot, starting with Omar Daru Jr. Omar, welcome aboard, pal. It's good to see you. And Erica Notstein. Erica, welcome to the squadron. All right. And David Bonner. David, nice to have you on this mission, buddy. All right, time pilots. Just so you know, we depend on fact fuel to power the chrono skimmer, and we'll be and you guys will be generating that fuel with your answers. All right. So, each of you is equipped with 100 power points. Let's check in with the Chrono Skimmer engine crew. All right. Moving and shaking. Now that they're ready and raring to go, let's begin our pursuit of Dr. Beljar. Chief, what's our mission profile? Squadron, your time target is 1831. Destination, the United States. At that time, freight was shipped around the nation via roads, steamboats, and canals. Then came the early railroads, which tried using horses to haul the trains. But in 1831, an English machine called the John Bull arrived in the US. It used steam power to pull rail cars. The John Bull sparked rail growth across the nation and became a symbol of the Industrial Revolution in America. Or so history told us till now, when Dr. Beljar made tracks back in time and burgled the bull. Thanks, Chief. Pilots, for 10 power points, what did Dr. Beljar steal? All right, was it a cable car, a steamroller, or a locomotive? Remembering the clues we just heard, arrived from Great Britain in 1831, used steam power to pull rail cars, and symbol of industrial revolution. All right, guys, lock onto an answer as soon as you can there. Omar, what'd you say? A steamroller. Okay, Erica? Locomotive. And David? Locomotive. Okay, the correct answer is locomotive. All right, we now know what Dr. Beljar stole, and if one of you today can retrieve that loot, 
and capture Carmen San Diego, you will win a complete multimedia computer system, all right? So let's go get it back. Engine room, let's warp to the time of the crime. All right, pilots, we followed Dr. Beljar back to the year 1831, but he's about to do some globe hopping here in the 1830s. So for us, it's time for global pursuit. All right, grab your controls, watch the globe on your screen, and buzz in when you think you know the answer, right? If you're right, you get five power points. If you're wrong, you lose five. Remember, we're in the 1830s, okay? Beljar is hiding in the country where the Yerta Canal opens, connecting the North Sea and the Baltic. Yes, Omar. Sweden? Correct, Sweden. Then he dashed to the place where the first railroad tunnel is built. What do you say, guys? Yes, Erica. England. Correct, England. Now he's gone to the state where the first wire cable bridge in the U.S. is built. Yes, David. Pennsylvania? Yes, Pennsylvania. He's in the city where a ship completes the first transatlantic crossing using only steam power. Omar. New York? Correct, New York. And the second ship to do, to do that arrived later the same day. Then he went to the city where the first clipper ship, that's a very fast sailing ship, is built. Yes, Omar. Baltimore? Baltimore, correct. Very nice, guys. But unfortunately, we got a tough break because it seems Dr. Beljar has skipped out of Baltimore right before we got there. So, wait a second. Hey, the clue finders locked onto some time turbulence in the 1900s. Let's bring him on board, see if he can help us. Hi, well, where'd you come from? From my workshop in 1905. My, you have remarkable equipment. I have a great interest in equipment. The name's Granville T. Woods. I'm an inventor. Hey, I've heard of you. You're the man they call the Black Thomas Edison. Ah, that's funny. I thought they called him the White Granville T. Woods. Anyway, I've come up with a new system for brakes on trains, which will make rail travel a lot safer. I've also invented a uh, telegraph induction system which allows stations to communicate with trains while they're moving. <laughs> wow, yeah, two inventions that change the history of railway, huh? That's great, but listen, uh, we've got a mission to complete. Those are my got... only inventions, you know. No. I also invented the overhead power line for trolleys. Trolleys, that's great, but we've got a... And the third rail for subways. Subways, that's terrific. And let's not forget the electric incubator keeps chickens' eggs warm until they hatch. Chickens, right, yeah. Wait a minute, what, what does that have to do with the railway system? Nothing, but the hens sure like it. Well, I'd better be getting back now. I've patented dozens and dozens of inventions uh, over the last 20 years, and if I let up now, <laughs> Our fellows back at the patent office will sure feel low. Well, we don't know. Keep them waiting. Don't, don't, don't touch that. Okay, thanks. Bye. Okay, we've got a mission to do. All right, guys. Let him get his own ship, right? All right, pilots. Where in time is Dr. Beljar? Tell me who was president. Rutherford B. Hayes, Teddy Roosevelt, or Franklin D. Roosevelt? Remembering the clues we just heard, 1905. Granville T. Woods and historic rail devices and other inventions. Lock on to an answer as soon as you can there, guys. All right, we're locked in. Omar, what'd you say, pal? Teddy Roosevelt. All right, Erica? Teddy Roosevelt. And David? Teddy Roosevelt. Correct answer is Teddy Roosevelt. Very good. Ten points for all you guys. All right, pilots. You know, the inventive genius of Granville T. Woods had a huge effect on rail travel, but history's heading for a train wreck if you don't get back the John Bull. So, engine crew, Let's warp to 1905. Okay, pilots, we made it back to 1905. So far, so good, doing very well, but... Uh-oh, oh no, that last warp used up all our fact fuel. We need to refuel with a data boost. All right, time pilots. The stolen John Bull locomotive could go up to 40 miles per hour. Now I'll name a living thing. Your job, buzz in and tell me whether its top speed is faster or slower than the John Bull's top speed. 
If you're right, you get five power points. If you're wrong, you lose five, all right? First, Cheetah. Yes, Omar. Faster. Correct. That's around 60 miles per hour as a cheetah. Black Mamba Snake. Yes, Erica. Slower. Correct. The fastest land snake, but that's only around 10 to 12 miles per hour. Okay, Garden Snail. Yes, Omar. Slower. Correct. About 350 hours to travel one mile. Peregrine Falcon. Yes, Omar. Faster. Correct. It's been clocked at an incredible 217 miles per hour. How about Angela Lansbury? Yes, Erica. Slower. Correct. We estimate Miss Lansbury's top speed to be around four to five miles per hour. All right, Time Pilots, great job. You've replenished our fact fuel. And just a reminder, all our fact fuel is verified by Encyclopedia Britannica. Now let's continue on our mission and get back the John Bull locomotive. But first, wait a minute. Pilots, we're, we're picking up something from the Trans Time Signal Monitor. It's Dr. Belgiar reporting to Carmen. Watch the view screen. Carmen! <laughs> this John Bull is so pr primitive. I, the genius Belgiar, need high tech to hold my attention. So I've gone to the Asian country that just built the world's fastest train. In English, it's nicknamed Bullet Train. But here on Honshu Island, they call it Shinkansen. At 130 miles per hour, it gives new meaning to rush hour. <laughs> By the way, the 18th Summer Olympics are in town. <laughs> I wanted to compete, but they told me all my body parts had to be human. Oh, no, Edward, it's all right. Oh, God, look, look what you've done. Balls. Is it my fault the world is bionically challenged? Over and out. All right. Boy, I thought we had problems, huh? All right, pilots, where can we find Dr. Beljar? Philippines in 1932, China in 1951, or Japan in 1964? Remember the clues we just heard? Shinkansen, or bullet train, Honshu Island, and 18th Summer Olympic Games. Let's lock on to an answer. All right. Omar, what'd you say, pal? China. Okay. Erica? Japan. And David? Japan. All right, correct answer is Japan. So it's 10 points for Erica and David. All right, you know, the Shinkansen was the world's fastest train until France's TGV began running in 1981. But there may be not trains at all, fast or slow, if you don't get back the bull. So let's warp to 1964. Catch me if you c can, time pilots. All right, pilots, we made it back to 1964, but Dr. Belgar has zapped our fact fuel, so it's time for another data boost. All right, time pilots, I'll name a historical event. It's up to you to buzz in and tell me whether it took place in the 1860s or the 1960s. If you're right, you get five power points, but if you're wrong, you lose five, okay? Remember, 1860s or 1960s. 15% of US families have more than one car. Yes, Erica. 1960. Correct, 1960. First underground railway opens. Yes, Omar. 1960. Actually, it's 1863. That was the London Underground. First undersea voyage around the world completed. Yes, David. 1860. I'm sorry, it's 1960 it would be. It was made by the nuclear sub USS Triton. Suez Canal opens. Yes, Erica. 1960s. Actually, it's 1869. Thaddeus Lowe named head of US Army Aeronautics Section. Yes, David. 1860s. Correct, 1860s. That was a tough one, though. He was a balloonist. All right, guys, tough round. We did a great job. We've replenished our fact fuel. So I'd say we're ready for time travel, wouldn't you? All right, for our next clue, we... Squadron, you know what that means? That means I'm needed in the engine room. So let me just check this out, okay? You guys be all right here? Power the chrono skimmer? Keep it under 20, okay? That's the century 20. All right, hang on. eerie sound. Oh, we're not sure, but it's been echoing through our time turbine. Channel, tunnel, channel. What? Channel, 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 channel
Oh. Hey, wait a minute. It might be a clue about an amazing thing that happened in the United Kingdom while John Major was Prime Minister. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. The Channel Tunnel or Channel opened linking Britain and France. It runs under the English Channel. And trains run back and forth carrying people, cars and trucks. Why? Yeah, that's you right. can leave London in the morning, have lunch in Paris, and be back in London by evening. That's true. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks guys. Thanks for your help. I, you know, keep up the good work, all right? See you later. Okay. Whew. Uh, all right. Well, that was helpful. I don't visit those guys enough, you know? They do a really good job, though. All right, pilots, where in time is Dr. Beljar? Tell me, 1974, 1984, or 1994? Just remember the clues we just heard. Channel opens under English Channel, links Britain and France, and British Prime Minister John Major. All right, guys, lock onto an answer there as soon as you can. Got to get back that loot. All right. Omar, what'd you say? 1984. All right. Erica? 1984. All right. David? 1984. Actually, the correct answer is 1994. It's a tough one, though. You know, people had dreamed of Channel Tunnel for centuries. Its completion was a major event in the history of rail travel, but it may never happen at all if we don't get back the John Bull. Okay, Squadron. We've got to make one final leap forward in time, and that means an ultimate data boost. <laughs> All right, guys, in an ultimate data boost, each correct answer is worth 10 power points. If you're right, you get 10 power points, but if you're wrong, you'll lose 10. All right, guys, the channel connects England and France, so I'll give you a name, your job, buzz in and tell me whether I've named a part of England, a part of France, or a character on Beverly Hills 90210. All right, each correct answer gets you 10 points, remember, but if you're wrong, you lose 10. Paris. Yes, Erica. Part of France. Correct, it's the French capital. Coventry. Yes, Omar. Part of England? Correct. It's an English city. Brittany. Yes, Erica. Part of England? Actually, it's part of France, a region in the northwestern part of France. Valerie. Yes, Omar. Character in 90210? Correct. Beverly Hills 90210 character played by Tiffany Amber Thiessen. All right, Verdun. Yes, David. France? Correct. Part of France is a French town. Isle of Wight. Yes, David. England? Correct, part of England, a small island off of England's southern coast. Brandon. Yes, Erica. Character on Anna She knows her characters. All right, played, of course, by Jason Priestley. How about Leeds? Yes, David. France? Actually, it's part of England. Uh, all right, finally, Steve. Yes, Omar. Character on Anna Yes, I don't recall going to Steve. Played by Ian Ziering. All right, guys, that completes it. Nice round. Let's see how well we did. Omar has 165, Erica has 155 power points, and David 145, which means that Omar and Erica are moving on to the next phase of our mission. But David, buddy, you did a great job. We couldn't have gotten this far without you, you know? Stay right there because the chief wants to say a few words to express our appreciation. You did some great navigating in pursuit of Dr. Beljar, but sometimes that bionic bozo has all the luck. To assist you on future missions, I'm awarding you our Acme Time Net Mission Pack. You'll get a Deluxe Britannica World Atlas, this official Carmen T-shirt, the Chrono Skimmer cap with you-know-who's picture in front, a wear-in-time watch, and finally, this Carmen San Diego CD-ROM library and board games. They're what top-notch time pilots pack for R&R breaks between missions. From the brass here at Acme Time Net Command, congratulations! Thanks, Chief. Okay, Squadron, we've sent David back to Time Net Command while we stay on board to complete our mission. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? All right, Chief, we're ready. Time pilots, the history of transportation is at stake. Get to the United Kingdom in 1994 and take the John Bull by the horns. Kevin, you're in command. Aye, aye, Chief. Time pilots, full speed ahead to 1994. Look, Belgium's got the John Bull in a cybersphere. Activate the loot tractor beam. You'll never catch the brilliant Belgium. 
All right, we've gotten back the John Bull and have it safely on board. Congratulations, guys. You've completed mission objective number one. But now we've got to return the loot to the year 1831. Let's check in with the chief to get our flight plan. Chief! Time pilots, you must navigate the chrono skimmer through eight events from the history of trains, starting at the most recent event and finishing at the least recent event. The time pilot who does that goes on to chase Carmen and Dr. Beljar along the trail of time. Here are the events on your flight plan. President Truman seizes control of U.S. railroads. The first all-air-conditioned train begins operation. MTV interviews President Bush on his campaign train. The John Bull locomotive arrives in the U.S. The first electric lights appear on a train. Bullet train service begins in Japan. Lincoln's body carried on funeral train. The Grateful Dead record the song Casey Jones. That's your briefing time, pilots. Good luck on your journey. All right, Omar, you have the higher score. You have the choice of going first or second. First. You're going to go first. All right. I want you to navigate this chrono skimmer back through time from the most recent event to the least recent event, starting by picking the most recent event on the board. Begin. MTV interviews Bush on train. Correct. You've navigated us to 1992. Can you pick the next most recent event? Grateful Dead record Casey Jones. Correct. You've steered us to 1970. That was a ballad about the death of a famous train engineer. Can you pick the next most recent event? Bullet train opens in Japan. Yes. You've piloted us to 1964. Can you name the next most recent event? First air conditioned train. OK, got to go to Erica. Start from the top. MTV interviews Bush on train. Correct. 1992. What's the next most recent event? Grateful Dead record Casey Jones. Correct. 1970. Bullet train opens in Japan. Yes, you've gotten us to 1964. What's the next most recent event? John Bull arrives in U.S. Hey, Omar, pick the most recent event on the board. MTV interview views Bush on train. Correct, 1992, what came next? Grateful Dead record, Casey Jones. Yes, 1970, followed by? Bullet train opens in Japan. Yes, 1964, can you name the next most recent event? Truman seizes U.S. railroads. Yes, you've piloted us to 1946, a measure taken to end national strikes by engineers and trainmen. Can you name the next most recent event? First air conditioned train. Yes, you've gotten us to 1931. First electric lights on train. Yes, you've piloted us to 1905. What came next? Lincoln's funeral train. Yes, 1865, followed by? John Bull arrives in the US. Correct, you've saved history, Omar. Congratulations, that's great. We'll move on in just a moment, okay? You, Erica, did a wonderful job. You should be proud of yourself. I am, okay? You're a great part of this squadron. And now, the chief has a word about your next mission. A squadron's only as good as each of its members, and you've been an outstanding time pilot today. That's why I'm awarding you this terrific time net mission pack and this cool portable CD player. The stereo headphones will let you listen to top secret mission profiles, and the rechargeable batteries will power you through any situation. You're a top flight time pilot. Congratulations. Omar, you did a great job. You returned the John Bull train to 1831. Feel pretty good? Yeah. All right, you should. Right now, Erica is piloting the chronic skimmer back to the present, but Beljar and Carmen are on the move again. It's your job to track them down, all right? So it's time for us to exit the chronic skimmer and head for the trail of time. Chief, is that a go? I'm activating the transportal departure bay, Kevin. Get ready to leave the chronic skimmer. We're ready, Chief. Look out, Carmen. We're on our way. Trail of time! You've got to track Carmen through six time portals, moving from the past to the 20th century, and the engine crew will guide you. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, Omar. Ready, <laughs> set, go, Omar! <laughs> Follow the engine crew to the first portal! It's 1865. What do passengers do in a Pullman railroad car? Sleep or watch movies? Sleep. Yes, good start, Omar! Right to the second portal! It's 1905. Who's improving air brakes for trains? Casey Jones or Granville T. Woods? Granville T. Woods? Yes, four more to go. You've got 62 seconds left. It's 1941. Which is a popular song in the U.S.? Locomotive Breath or Chattanooga Choo Choo? Chattanooga Choo Choo? All right, you've captured Dr. Beljar. Congratulations. 
It's 1960, what travels around the world for the first time, a nuclear sub or hot air balloon? Hot air balloon? Pull the rope, open the gate, Omar. Pull the rope, keep pulling. Harder, harder. Keep going, pal. All right, you've got two more left with 28 seconds left. It's 1970, which television show features kids dancing? Soul Train or Club MTV? Soul Train? All right, one more to go, Omar. It's 1994. With which country does the channel connect England, France, or Germany? France? Yes, yeah. you've made it through the trial of time, Omar. Congratulations. And you've energized the capture crystal. Now to capture Carmen, go ahead and touch it. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, Omar, you captured Carmen Sandiego, you captured Dr. Beljar, and you returned the loot to its proper place in history. Feel pretty good? Yeah. All right, right now the Chief wants to tell you what you've won. Chief, you've done everything we've asked of you today and earned an A1 mission rating. So we're giving you a complete multimedia computer system featuring a 28.8 BPS fax modem, 850 meg EIDE hard drive, and lots of other great initials and numbers. You'll also get a year of Britannica Online, the ultimate interactive info source, plus the Britannica CD-ROM encyclopedia, and the 32-volume encyclopedia set. By soon, you'll be the most knowledgeable person in history. Time Pilot, I salute you. Thanks, Chief. Omar, you did a great job, and you won the big computer. You happy? Yeah. All right, great. You did an excellent job. You made a wonderful time pilot. But right now, we've got to send you back to the present. And remember, at Acme TimeNet, history is our job. The future is yours. We're on the case, and we're chasing her through history. All historical information has been verified by Encyclopedia Britannica and was accurate as of the date this program was recorded. This program was produced by W. Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Viewers like you. The National Endowment for Children's Educational Television. And Delta Air.